Hello, my name is Carl and I used to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses. For 22 years I was a part of the Blythe Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses in Northumberland and this is the Kingdom Hall that I used to attend. The purpose of this video and subsequent videos, a few reasons really, um, there is a growing number of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses making videos and it is excellent because it makes you feel as though you are part of a growing body of happy people. People who've been released from this um, mind control cult. So it's to show that you can escape and you can survive. Part of it, and another reason, is to show current members who have doubts that there is life after the Watchtower and that it's nothing to be afraid of. And because I've been born and brought up in Blythe, and now I'm being shunned by people who I've known for over two decades, never had bad words with them, and now I'm being shunned by them, um, I find that very, very insulting. Um, I don't want to discuss doctrine with them when I see them in the street, just a simple, hello, are you all right? That will do, and I'll go away. But I've written to the coordinator of the Body of Elders, I've texted him, and I have got no response. So I told him, if you continue to ignore my you know, written requests to just be reasonable, then I'll turn to a bit of activism. So this is also for you, coordinator. Your choice, you could have avoided this, you chose not to. So in this video, this is the third video that I've done, but this is the first one where it's just me looking to the camera. Um, I'm just going to talk a bit about how I got the truth and how I, 22 years later, escaped from the truth. And I know for a fact that some members of the Blythe congregation have already watched at least one of the videos. I've got an email telling me so. So I hope that more people in the congregation do um, watch these videos and aren't put off by the fear mongering that they get from the organisation about don't watch this and don't watch that. We will approve what you want to watch, what you should watch. Just give it a try. I'm not going to, this, um, this first video is, is going to be nothing to do with doctrine, no Bible at all, but it will explain how I come to leave the organisation. So very briefly, I was born 1971. As a child, I was always inquisitive about why we're here, where did we come from, do you survive death, why is there so much wickedness on the earth? And these questions were with me ever since I can recall being a child capable of independent thinking. And as I grew older, those thoughts never went away. I remember being at work in my late teens, encouraging debate on these subjects. I wanted other people's opinions, whether they were religious or not. Um, and then I was at home about 100 yards from where I am sitting right now. And uh, my sister had already said, you're going to love the Jehovah's Witnesses when they come round because they'll, they'll talk to you forever on this subject. So I was actually looking forward to the Witnesses coming round. Sure enough, February 1990, knock on the door and here are the Jehovah's Witnesses. A pioneer brother and sister. Um, it was the young brother's store. And he did his introduction, don't recall what it was, but I took the bait. The conversation had begun. The pioneer sister was then just looking at the pioneer brother saying, come on, you know, get on with it, and he's taking the bait, and the pioneer brother could not be asked at all. Um, there was no interest from him, although he was a pioneer, he had little interest in the ministry, maybe he was just having an off day, I don't know. So I later found out the pioneer sister thought, I'm going to give you 20, 30 seconds, and if you don't jump in, if you don't sort yourself out, I'm going to jump in and take this call over. So that's what happened. The sister took it over, and Conversations, discussions continued, return visits. So this was throughout the summer of 1990. Um, I was given a book. This is the exact book that I was given. You can live forever in paradise on earth. I didn't take it seriously to start with, although I was interested because 1990 turned out to be a bit of a, an unusual crazy year. Um, so anyway, it appeared to me, looking back, once I was a witness, that 1990 was the crazy year it was because Satan was having one last try to keep me in his world. But it wasn't to be. So, we're now at the end of 1990. I've now got no contact with witnesses. I don't have anyone calling on me. I've been kicked out of my family home. I'm living in a bedsit. I go back to the magazines and I start to read them once again. No one knows I'm reading them, just me. It was January, yes, by January, January, February 1990. I was sitting in my bedsit. It was a Saturday afternoon, 
and I was going through this book and some magazines. And it's difficult to explain if you've never felt it before, but you've got all these different pieces of information that the witnesses have given you or you've got from the literature. And it, doesn't, it didn't always make sense. But then, in one instant, as quick as that, everything just seemed to fit into place and I got it. In that instant, I thought, I found the truth. This is the truth. It all makes sense. The paradise lost, the paradise regained, the trouble in the middle, the last days we're in now, 1914. It all makes sense. How have I not seen this before? So then I decided, right, I won't get in touch with the Pioneer Sister because I know it's just a matter of time we will cross paths again. And when I do, I'll tell her, yes, I'll come to meetings because previously she'd said, come to meetings, come to meetings. I was too shy, I was too self-conscious. No chance was I going to a public meeting with all those strangers. So when I met her down in Blythe, by chance, we went and sat in the car for maybe an hour, talking. Obviously, she was thrilled because the last she'd heard, I was just living this worldly lifestyle. And now I was sitting in front of her saying, I know it's the truth. Will you come to meetings? Yes, of course, I'll come to meetings. So she was absolutely thrilled that this had all taken place. So that was my introduction to the truth. And, <laughs> and, um, and how I came to believe it to be the truth. After that, I took my studies very seriously. I had two studies a week at times, and I've also got in this book all the dates of my studies and who came on the study with the Pioneer. I got baptised October 27th, 1991. Got married to the Pioneer sister in March 1992. A love story, of course. <laughs> Meet someone in the ministry in first call, and then a Bible study is conducted, and then five months or something after the baptism, the marriage follows. Um, so that's where I was at. Uh, became a ministerial servant um, about 10 years later and then became the account servant immediately after that and I was the account servant and a ministerial servant until I realised I'd been conned. So how did I realise that Jehovah's Witnesses are not the true religion? It's interesting to watch other people's videos and how they woke up because there are so many different ways, so many different things that just ignite the spark in people to wake them up to realize this isn't the truth and before i tell you how that happened i just want to say to those witnesses who are still inside i had wanted to leave before but i was afraid of doing so i was afraid because i still believed it was the truth now when you leave the witnesses if you still believe it's the truth but you leave i'd imagine your conscience must play havoc with you you can't really enjoy life because you're doing what you want to do, but you feel as though you're not doing what you should be doing, according to Jehovah or the governing body or, or whoever authority it is that you're answering to. So yes, many people leave the witnesses, but they don't have joy. And I can tell you now from my experience talking to people who've left for other reasons, if you leave the Jehovah's Witnesses because you realise, you know for a fact it's not the true religion, your life just goes through the roof, it's stratospheric, you are so happy. I woke up in November 2013 and I'm still buzzing with life now. I love life. I never thought life could be this happy. When I used to imagine what life was going to be like in paradise, it was never with the same feeling of freedom and liberation and joy that I have right now. When you can leave that kingdom hall or any kingdom hall, knowing it's not the truth, there is nothing to fear. Nothing at all. Just get out there and enjoy life. So how did I wake up? Purely by chance, absolutely by chance. Throughout my time as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I'd been very obedient to the council, keep away from apostasy. I never went anywhere near it. I had one brush with apostasy when I was newly baptised, and I thought it was bitter and twisted, and that put me off too. I'll never ever go back there. Apostasy is bad. Um, so, I kept away from it. And I came across it by chance. In a strange way, I have got Jimmy Savile, the infamous paedophile, to thank for this. And this is how it happened. It was November 2013. I think my wife was out on the ministry that afternoon. I was off work and I was at home watching YouTube videos about things like Jimmy Savile and the Ninth Circle and the paedophile rings within the establishment. Previous to that, I'd also been watching Jehovah's Witness made DVDs. Uh, at assemblies, you know, DVDs are released and they're put in for, for release. But instead of putting the DVD in the computer, all I did was 
um, all I did was go to YouTube and just watch it there. And this was important because YouTube would remember my searches, so it knew I was interested in Jehovah's Witnesses, and it knew I was also interested in the paedophilia within the establishment. So what YouTube did was it combined the searches and gave me, on the right hand side, suggested videos that I might want to watch. And top of the list was uh, a panorama program from, I think it was 2002, 2002 I think, called Stuff for Little Children, or Stuff for the Little Children. I knew about this documentary, but I'd never watched it. BBC, apostate propaganda rubbish to poison people's minds against Jehovah's Witnesses. So I knew that program existed, had never seen it. Below that in the list, Silent Lambs. I knew that was on a similar vein. More apostate rubbish about paedophilia within Jehovah's Witnesses, utter garbage, not watching it. The third one was about a young woman called Candace Conti. And she'd been involved in a case in America because she was brought up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses and she was sexually abused by a brother in the congregation. So she'd gone to court, she'd won, and at that time, it's changed now, but at that time she'd been awarded $28 million. And that made me stop in my tracks because I was thinking, this isn't just propaganda, like a TV programme could be. This is a court case. You've got the prosecution, and they're gonna see all the evidence they wanna see. You've got the defence, and they're gonna defend everything. In the court, everyone has had their say. And yet the Watchtower Society were still found guilty. And I thought, this is, this is bizarre. Um, so I thought, well, I can trust this, I can watch this. I'm not going to stick my head in the sand. I'm not going to do any harm by watching it because everything is going to be based on fact. So I watched that, jaw hitting the floor. As soon as that was finished, I went back, I watched the BBC Panorama programme, watched Silent Lambs, and as quickly as that, when I realised in 1991 I found the truth, as quickly as that, I also realised it was a load of bullshit. I, I was literally in shock. You know, like if you've been in a car accident, the shock you go into. It was a case of there were so many things going through my mind in that instant because I'd woken up so fast and realised in an instant, it's not the truth. And I had mixed feelings. Most of the feelings were very, very, very positive because I realised straight away, no more ministry, no meetings, no study, no feelings of guilt for never, ever, ever doing enough. No feelings of frustration at your own imperfections. So I had all these positive feelings about, I don't have these pressures anymore and I don't need to feel guilty about it because I'm going to walk out that Kingdom Hall and I know it's not the truth. I can walk out there and be happy. I didn't have any idea how happy I was going to be, but I knew I could be happy. That was November 2013. And in very, you know, an hour, an hour and a half, bang, I realised this was just a company, a corporation, an organisation to make money. When we, when we, I'm still talking we, when they, when I used to talk about the, the world of false religion, these were always cocooned. My own religion was always cocooned from that. We're not included. Once you realise they're just part of it too, they're part of all the religions, there is no true religion, it makes you feel so happy that you can walk out of there, guilt-free, and start to live your life. Jehovah's Witnesses live their lives not for the now, because that's selfish. They live for the future. If you've got plans, the things that you really want to do with your life, wait until paradise. You've got forever to do it. Don't do it now, you selfish thing. You know, work for kingdom interests. Serve the corporation now. Whatever you want to do in the future, you've got plenty of time. Don't be selfish and do it now. And so, if you don't live for the now, how can you ever be really happy? Because you're living for a time that never, ever comes. So I've started living for the now, and I believe that is one of the main reasons that the joy in my life has increased so much. The negative feelings I had about waking up to the fact that this was a load of shite was I've got a wife who was fully committed, and this is going to turn her world upside down. She's out with the ministry right now, and she is totally oblivious to the fact that I've realised it's a mind control cult and I'm going to get out. So that was a sad part. Another sad part is the fact that the world's problems are going to continue. There is no solution to the world problems. There is no life in a paradise earth to look forward to. There is no resurrection. 
So there were... Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.